Hi, how's it going everyone? My name is Hank and today I'm going to be talking about the main index in New Zealand. So I'm sure if you have invested in the New Zealand market for a while, you would have heard of the New Zealand top 50 index, which is an index that follows the uh, top 50 companies in New Zealand. You might have also invested in one of the many uh, New Zealand top 50 ETFs out there. For example, there's a few different smart shares New Zealand top 50 ETFs. There's one called the New Zealand Top 50 ETF with the symbol FNZ, but there's also the SMP NZX 50 ETF with the symbol NZG. Now they are quite similar in many ways with the main difference being the percentage distribution of the companies within those ETFs. I've made a video in the past going over the differences between the Top 50 ETFs, uh, which I'll leave a link in the description somewhere. And then you have Simplicity uh, with their New Zealand shared investment fund that also invests in the top companies in New Zealand. And then you have Kernel with their NZ20 fund, uh, which invests in the top 20 uh, New Zealand companies. Basically, there's many different New Zealand top ETFs out there. But have you ever wondered what exactly are the top 50 New Zealand companies? Here's a helpful resource that shows you what the NZX top 50 companies are. So go to interest.co.nz slash NZX50 and you'll see a list of all the companies that are in the NZX top 50. If we scroll down, we can see a list of the company along with a simple profile of each of the company, uh, which gives you the basic details, including operations, earnings, and their capital structure. So if we look at the top 10 in the New Zealand top 50, and number one, we have Fish and Park or Healthcare, number two, Auckland Airport, number three, Spark New Zealand, number four, Mainframe, number five, Contact Energy, number six, Infratel, Number seven, Meridian Energy. Number eight, eBoss. Number nine, Fletcher Building. Number 10, Ryman Healthcare. So you, it also shows you the uh, share price. Now this page is not updated every day, so it's updated about once a week. So the share price may fluctuate a bit. It also shows the uh, capitalization for each of the companies. So currently, uh, Fish and Paco Healthcare is the largest company at the moment by their uh, market cap with a market cap of uh, 12 billion New Zealand dollars and it's a range down. It also shows the uh, percentage of the companies that they take up in the NZX50. So for example, Fish and Paco Healthcare takes up about 10% of the uh, NZX50. And as you go down, you go down to 7.9%, uh, 7.7%, etc, etc. Et and so when you're all the way at the bottom with the uh, number 50, uh, Napier Port Holdings, which accounts for 0.2% of the New Zealand Top 50. Now, if we click on one of the profiles for uh, one of the companies, we can see a little bit more details on the particular company. For example, we have Fish and Pico Healthcare. So it's got some basic information there, such as the rank uh, of the company in the New Zealand uh, Top 50. It's got the chairman, chief executive. For the charts, uh, the first chart shows you the total capitalization for Fish and Pico Healthcare. And then you can go down and see the uh, ranking of Fish and Pico Healthcare in the New Zealand Top 50. So it's been a fairly consistent at number one over the uh, past year or so. Then we can have a look at the uh, share price. So share price has definitely been fluctuating quite a bit within the range. Here we can see a percentage change uh, to their capitalization. So again, the share price has been fluctuating quite a bit for the last couple of months, and so has their market cap. It also shows you the weekly dollar amount change to their market cap. Uh, again, it's similar to the percentage. Next up, we have a simplified financial statement for the company. So you get the total revenue for the company. Uh, for the past five years or so. So the last earnings report, uh, they have $1.971 billion in revenue, and they have $524 million in terms of after-tax profit, and they have a dividend per share of $0.38. Cents. If we scroll down a bit more, it shows you the uh, revenue history in a graph form. So we can see that Fish and Parkour revenue has been increasing over the past few years, and so has their profit. Down here, it also shows you the total assets and liabilities for Fish and Parkour Healthcare. Again, 
a, a lot of total assets compared to their total li liability. Graph shows that they have an increasing amount of total assets over the past couple of years. And then here's just a uh, summary of the uh, cash flow and position. So they currently have an excess amount of cash. And then in this chart, you get some key ratios. So for the uh, latest earnings report, uh, 2021, they have an earnings per share of 91 cents, a P ratio of 35, and a uh, dividend yield of 0.98%. So the dividend yield has been uh, changing a little bit over the past couple of years. If we take a look at another company, eBoss, they currently rank number eight out of the 50 uh, top New Zealand companies. Their market cap has been increasing over the uh, past couple of months. Their ranking on the NZX50 has been steadily decreasing, which means that they are moving up the uh, ranks. Their share price has also been increasing over the past couple of months, and the weekly uh, percentage change to their capitalization has been fluctuating around quite a bit. And it's, and it's a similar result to their dollar amount change in their market, market capitalization. Their total revenue has been increasing over time with a dip in 2019, and their uh, after-tax profit has also been uh, increasing over the past couple of years, and they also have an increasing dividend. Total assets is higher than their total liability, which is again always a good sign. So during the last year of 2021, they have uh, more cash outflows than their cash inflows, which if carried on for an extended period of time could be a, a bad sign. So from 2020 to 2021, they have a, a significant decrease uh, for the cash that they're holding by the end of the year. Earnings per share just over $1.13 uh, with a 28p ratio and a dividend yield of just over 2.7. So all of these are very, very useful information uh, in regards to whether or not you want to invest in a particular company. So next time, if you ever wonder whether or not you should invest in a particular New Zealand company, go and check out the uh, website with the New Zealand top 50 companies first. So speaking of the uh, market more broadly, I know the market has not been doing particularly well for the past couple of months. And I just want to uh, take a look at it from a long-term point of view. If we look at the charts for the NZX50 over the past couple of years, now, if you only started investing in the New Zealand top 50 in January, 2022, the market will be uh, down by around 10%. If you started investing in the NZX50 in January of 2021, though, you'll be down even more by around 13, 14%. But despite all of that downturn, now, if you invested back in uh, 2015 in the NZX top 50, you would still be up more than 100%. So again, time is your ally in the market here. If you have a long-term time frame, uh, you sh there's no reason why you should not be uh, investing even during a downturn. So check out the webpage if you want to invest in some of these companies, and I'll see you next time.